Sada and Philip of class 12B here to say a few words about one of my favourite books, The Book Thief, written by world known Australian author Marcus Zuzak, who was once an international bestseller in the year 2005. What sets the story apart from many others, perhaps, is the fact that it is narrated by none other than death itself. Yet surprisingly, death is not the villain of our story. Instead, it is portrayed as a helpless character, confounded by the duality of human nature. Death visits the protagonist of our story three times in the course of her life. The story, set in Nazi Germany, follows the life of a nine-year-old little girl, an orphan, Liza Meminger, after she is sent to live with the foster family in the fictional town of Molnick. Here, she lives with Hans and Rosa Hoberman. Over the course of her time at Hymel Street, Liza realizes that her foster father, a soft-spoken accordion player, had actually fought in the First World War and was a Jew sympathizer. He helps Max Vandenberg, a Jewish fist fighter, hide out in his basement away from persecution as he had fought with Max's father in the First World War. Max and Liza form a strong bond rooted in their common love for books. Max teaches Liza how to read a book which she had once found abandoned in a graveyard. Though Liza is fascinated by the world of books, she does not have the means to buy them. Thus, she resorts to stealing them. However, our book thief doesn't always steal books. Sometimes, she borrows them from the mayor's wife, Ilsa. When Hans publicly helps an injured Jewish prisoner, suspicions arise forcing Max to flee the safety of his basement. However, before leaving, he leaves Liza a little present, a book that he had written about his own life. He encourages Liza to do the same as well. When an unexpected bombing shakes the whole town, Liza, holed up in her basement, writing away in her little book, is the sole survivor of the destruction that follows. Her book, left in the rubble, is saved by death. Throughout the story, emphasis is put on courage and morality. Both Liza and Hans stand for what they believe in, no matter what consequences they may have to face. Their courage and integrity inspires those around them. Their kindness, greatness and integrity inspires the readers to act when action is needed and not shy away from our responsibilities towards humanity. Even in their little town, reading books was a source of solace for them. Liza's father couldn't read much either, but together they used to learn new words, write them up on the walls of the basement. The mayor's wife, Ilsa, gives Liza a little black book, which leads Liza to write her own story, The Book Thief. In this way, the characters of the story show incredible strength when it comes to overcoming adversities and make, holding fast to their beliefs and principles while doing so. Liza's youth was rampant with death, loss and grief. And yet, even in the midst of all this, she blossoms from a nine-year-old little girl that was frightened and couldn't read to a woman that survived one of the most horrific wars that have ever been fought. Namaste to one and all. My name is Abhiya K and I would like to introduce to you one of my favorite books named The Magic of Thinking Big written by David J. Schwartz. The author of this book is an American motivational writer and coach and as the name of the book suggests, it is a self-help book. But wait, don't start wondering that why someone should suggest a book which is less interesting than the other fictional exciting, adventurous books that we can have because trust me, this book is worth it. As you all know, we can come across many self-help books and articles which may seem very misleading. They can give us many harmful informations and even sometimes they can make uncertain people feel more worse about themselves. But this book is different and one of the greatest self-help book that one can have as quoted by the Forbes magazine. This book was originally published in 1959 which means this book is about 60 years old but still 
every word in it can be applied in the modern world this book encourages you to self reflect and each chapter of this book encompasses different tools techniques and behaviors to master your own mind given along with relatable examples from the author's real life the author puts forth ideas very clearly with simple and concise language this book helps you to dare to think about the impossible but hear me out the beginning of a book can make you a little bit unimpressed because the advice you get from those pages is just what you expect like for example believe you can succeed and you will but promise yourself that you won't stop here and then only you can get to know the key part of this book and lastly i would like to share one of the many valuable things that i have learned from this book with you it is in the form of a question and it goes on like this how many of you believe that you can move a mountain i repeat how many of you believe that you can move a mountain not many will i think but my question was not how many of you wish to move a mountain because people often confuse belief with wishful thinking you just wish that you need something probably you won't get it but you believe that you need something and you work for it surely you will succeed as i conclude for those who have already read this book please consider reading this again and for those who haven't just go for it and i would be so happy to know if this book could ever make an inch of difference in the way you look at your life and the people around you thank you